While we've been talking about selections, I'm just going to show you one thing that's really, really useful in CS5. Um, they brought this feature out in CS4, I think, perhaps uh, it might have even been CS3, but um, it didn't work that well, but it's sort of getting there now. And what I'm going to do is open up an image called Sky here, and I'm also going to open up an image called Wild here. And now, because we're on selections, one of the worst things of all um, with selections is actually hair. And uh, you can see this girl has got some pretty wild hair, hence the name of the file. So I've opened them up out of my samples folder, and I'm going to grab my move tool, which is V on the keyboard, click, drag, take it across to the sky layer. And what we're going to do is try and get it so that that's a nice clear cut hairdo over the top of the sky. So I need to transfer, transform her down a wee bit, so I'm going to go Command-T, and we can see there's the um, edges there, so I'm just going to go Shift and Option, and that's going to draw in like that. And we'll put it round about there. Double-click in there, that gives us the transform. And what we're going to do, first of all, is try and select the most of this that we can uh, quite quickly. And I'd say the easiest way would be the old Quick Selection tool. Um, I'll choose a brush size, square brackets keys there, click and drag. That skin's going to be okay, no problem at all there. In fact, let me just show you before I do that, what would happen if I tried the old uh, magic wand. A lot of people just go straight for this. I click on that, hold down shift, add some in, hold down shift, add some in. This is something that we've done. And we'll do that. And we've got that amount, I'll hit delete and deselect and really not quite doing it for me that's just not really good enough we're getting away with it a wee bit here because of the color of the sky but um, really not a great job so what I'm going to do is go option command Z get it all back select the worst of her with the quick selection tool when I say the worst I mean the most so I'll just click and drag over there add these bits in so that's all good there and I love this tool because it's just so easy to use. So we've got most of it there, and um, that's great. But what we can do now is right up the top, there's this thing here. You can use this on other um, images and things like that as well, but it's particularly good for this kind of thing. And what we've got there is this little feature called Refine Edge. I'm going to click that, and it gives us a whole bunch of options. And if you haven't used it before, they can be a little bit scary and it doesn't give you what you're expecting and it can be a bit of a pain. Um, initially, let's take a look in here. It's saying the view mode. Now this is important because it can show you um, a whole bunch of things. And if you click on there, what I can have is the marching ants or an overlay on black and you can see that's doing that on white, black and white or on layers. And I find that easy because if you already got it on a layer, it's quite good to see how it's looking underneath there. And if you go reveal layer, didn't do much at all. So there you go. And note down there, if you press X, it temporarily uh, disables all of the views. So I'll click off that bit, zoom out a wee bit more so we can see what's going on here. So that in itself hasn't done anything, but we've just changed that view. Okay, so that's all good. And now the next thing um, that's probably best to use is this little button here. It's kind of hidden away, but there it is. You've got a Refine Radius tool and an Erase Refinements tool. Now if you use the Refine Radius tool, the way this works is you choose a brush size and you paint the areas back in that you want it to have another look at. Okay, so I'm painting it back in where it's missed some of the hair. And as soon as I let go of this, which I'll do in a second, what it does is have another think about it and it tries to sort of think things through and see if it can make a better job of it. Um, if you go on the net, you probably find all the scientific data on this and explanations. I'll just go around there because it's under the interface there. But for me, I'm just using it and seeing how it goes. And there we go. That looks not too bad at all, actually. So I'm fairly happy with that, just like that. But um, before we, we go, let's just have a look at some of these other things. If we go Smart Radius, it does something else. And you can see that it's had a wee think about it. You can play with any of these sliders. And they're all there to uh, give you a better result. And as you can see, it's just making slight changes as I drag that up. 
can turn that on or off. I'll turn it off and see what it's done. Not a huge amount, but as you can see, um, it's not too bad. Smooth, if you pull that up, you can see what that's done. That's sort of softened it off a little bit. But we're getting this kind of ghosting in there. Feather, that's going to soften it. We talked about feathering before. And in some cases, that would be really handy. In other cases, it's not going to be that handy at all. Okay, it doesn't look too bad there. The contrast, that's probably quite a good one because it'll look at um, heavy contrast there. And you see, just all I'm doing is tinkering around. I'm not giving you huge explanations of this. And uh, shift edge, play around with that. That's pulled it in a little bit and it's certainly cut it back a wee bit. It certainly tidied it up somewhat. And one other thing there that we could do is decamp decontaminate the colour and hopefully that's going to try and pull out some of the colour in there. We'll push that right up to see how that does. There we go and that's kind of pulled out a wee bit of the um, the blue that was contaminating in there. Uh, it's looking a bit fake around the edge there. That's the, that's the feather so I'm just going to pull that back a wee bit and see how that goes. That's a wee bit better. In fact I'm just going to pull that feather off quite a lot. Okay because it's just looking a wee bit too soft that's a wee bit better. In this case the feather is not that useful to us and you never even know what you're going to get really and um, what you're going to sort of use in these things. Each scenario is different but it's just knowing that it's there and that you can use it and it uh, certainly does look good. When you're happy with that one thing that you can do is uh, change what output you've got because we've got this layer here and if I close, uh, click down on there you can go for a new layer new layer with layer mask, new document, new document with layer mask. I am going to use this because uh, shortly we're going to be doing uh, layer mask and we can possibly come back to this and look at why we might have used that. So if I click that and go OK, there we go. It gives us this thing which is a bit odd for you guys at the moment because you haven't learned about layer masks. But we'll come back to this. But for now, that result is really good. You see also that the original down here is left behind so you haven't actually got rid of that one. So I'll click that, and that's what we started with. Turn it off again, and that's what we ended up with. Not bad at all. And that was a difficult selection to make.